Hello and thank you for joining us today here at the Brummie Patch. My name is Wendy and on technicals today we've got Alicia. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you for all the responses that you've been sending um, about our tutorials. We're so pleased that you're enjoying them and please carry on viewing because we've got some more really nice ones lined up for you. Today we're going to look at how to use the Creative Grids Curvy Log Cabin Ruler, the 8 inch. Um, it's a really nice ruler to use, uh, very, very simple, and it looks complicated, but trust me, it isn't. Um, I've bought a couple of things to show you, but there are lots of more layouts that you can actually do with these. Um, I've probably made about 600 of these blocks in the last 12 months, but I've actually gifted all my quilts away, so I can't bring them in to show you. Um, the quilt that you see that's under construction, uh, I decided to run this up yesterday afternoon. Um, as you can see, if you can imagine, this is going to be reflected the other way around. So you're going to have this lovely shape coming through. Um, and it's really enjoyable. This has been made out of scraps. Uh, a lot of the scraps of that one is actually from um, the uh, ends of the fabric that were left from my backings that I've had um, quilted on the long arm quilting machine. So that's just one very, very simple layout that you can do. Uh, I've also run a couple of cushions up. Uh, so this one, you can see the, you're getting like a curved effect to give this uh, shape in the center. And these are exactly the same blocks, but the other way round. And that shows you how you can get the circle effect. And these actually, if you put more blocks to them, you can make um, like a, a Christmas wreath design, which is also uh, really nice to do. I've done that in the past as well. So those are just a couple um, of the layouts uh, that you can actually do with it. So inside the ruler are all the instructions of how to use it. And they are very, very good and very easy to follow. Uh, but I'm gonna actually just explain and show you today how you can do them very simply at home yourself. So we'll just pop that to one side. So first of all, on the ruler, if I put it on paper, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see it. It actually states here at the top, that the narrow strips you need to cut at least one and a half inches wide. Now, um, as long as you have one straight edge, it doesn't matter about the other edge because everything is going to be trimmed as you work through it. Uh, the wider strips need to be at least two and a quarter inch is wide. Again, as long as you've got one straight edge, that's absolutely fine. Um, it also states on here, uh, that you need a centre square and that can be measured by the piece at the bottom. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to actually do that. Um, first of all, you can do it really accurately. So what you can do, you can take your fabric, I'll just get a piece from over here, And this is the one piece that does need to be cut accurately. Okay, so all you need to do is place your ruler. You can hopefully see that it's got white lines um, just around here. And I'm going to cut it into the center just to make sure I get a really, really accurate um, 90 degree angles on the corner. And I'm just going to cut, cut. Let me move that. Now, if I turn that around and place the dotted white line to the edge of that fabric, I can slide it on so I know that I've got it absolutely accurate. And now I can cut that square like so. So that square is one and three quarter inches, which it states here. The center square cut one and three quarter inches. So it's all on the ruler and it is in the instructions as well. So that's the first thing you can do if you want to start off with exactly the right size, as long as you know you can actually get a good quarter of an inch seam. 
Uh, there's a little safety measure as well built into the ruler to make sure you can actually stitch correctly. And all you need to do is turn your piece of fabric that you've just cut over and place that square that you've just used to cut it actually on the back of the fabric. And using a fabric marker, I've got a biro so that hopefully you can see it better. And just put that in and there's four little holes and you can just mark those holes. Like so. So now you know that when you sew, if you can see, we would sew from dot to dot. So we can sew from here to here. Okay. If you would prefer to do it a different way, this one I actually did a little bit darker. I did this one earlier so that you could see it better. Okay. If you would prefer just to do a random piece, you can. So in which case, whoops, all you need to do is have one good right angle, like so. So we've got these sides that we would, we, would, we would be working with. So I'm just gonna pop that down. So it doesn't matter which way round you want to do it. What you need to do is take your square and this is the one that has the dots on the back so first of all what you need to do is sew a piece to one edge now the rule of this ruler is you always sew in a clockwise rotation so always go clockwise so the first strip you would just place and sew to the bottom edge. Like so. That's, that would be the position you're sewing in. Then you would trim it and sew the second piece to the other edge. Now that is all neat and accurate. So there's no trimming on that one. But if you prefer to do it where you're using a slightly larger piece because you're unsure that you're going to get a good seam allowance, this is one that I've cut. So you can see this is much, much larger than what it needs to be. So all you need to do is take your ruler and the squares uh, that we actually cut the first square with for the center piece. Put the black lines now on your sewn line, like so. And trim. Now, that one is equally as accurate as that one because we know we've just measured it. And that was with no dots on the back of that one. And that one had the dots on it, but they're exactly the same size now. So it makes no difference which way you choose to do it. So the next thing you need to do, so this is your center square. This was the first one we sewn on, and then the second strip. You then need to continue and put another strip here and another strip down here. So this is what it would look like once you've sewn your third strip on. This is the new one, the new addition to the block. You would press it back and just make sure that this edge is nice and flush. Moving on from there, just phase those at the top, you then add your next strip to the last side. So that then means your center square is completely surrounded by strips. 
Now, when you do this, you can decide whether you prefer to start off doing your colour with the narrow strip or whether you prefer to do it starting off with the wider strip. And the difference being, this is one that I've started off. So here is the centre square. And I chose to do this in a cream with the narrow strips and then moving on to the wider ones. Whereas this one, no, not that one, this one. This one, I've started with the centre square and I've done the wider strip first. So wide, wide, narrow, narrow. The measurements come out the same, but it's just depending on which fabrics you prefer to be more dominant. So now we have the centre square surrounded with all the four strips. So this is where this clever ruler helps you work out how to cut it extremely accurately. So you take your trim tool and stated on the ruler, it says narrow round or wide round. And it's really, really simple to do. So first of all, I'm going to trim the wide round. So I need to take the ruler where it says wide round one and that's surrounded by a black square just here. So this is the wide round one inside the black square. So this black square is what I actually need to place on the center square. So I'm placing it on the centre square. I've got the centre square here and the wide round here and here. So I'm placing it with the top right hand corner in the top right hand corner of the centre square, like so. So that's sitting nicely. It, it's all got, also got dotted lines right the way along. So you need to position those lines on your sewn line. Just place pressure on your ruler, making sure you haven't moved it at all. And you're going to trim the side and the top, like so. Then you will turn your piece of work 180 degrees. So the top right hand corner, is now going to be the bottom left hand corner. You're also going to take your ruler and you're also going to rotate that now 180 degrees. So we now have the square at the top that says narrow round one. And we're going to place the narrow round one, once again, top right hand corner on the top right hand corner of the center square, like so. Place your pressure, trim, trim. And now we have the center square with its first round on it. So all you need to do now is carry on and add another round all the way around once again. So you can always tell which round you need to add on to next because it's the round where you've got a completely straight piece of fabric and you're coming off again, going in the clockwise direction. So this would be the next round to go on. Then here, here and here. Remembering that this round is going to be the narrow round and the next one. So you're always doing two rounds of narrow, two rounds of wide, and keep going. So once you've done that, we can then see this one. Now I've done this one particularly scrappy, so you can see that you really don't have to have all the edges beautiful. This has still got the salvage on it. 
and I left it like that purposely so that you could actually see. So if you can see this one, this is the centre square and this has now got round one and round two in the narrow and exactly the same. So once again, I'm going to trim the wide round to start with. So I'm going to place that there and take my ruler. And now I'm going to place the wide round two just here on the center square. So because I'm, just going to move that out of the way. Because I'm placing the wide round two on the center, it's now allowing me to put the other lines on the previous sewn line so I can see that I'm keeping everything nice and straight. And that's sitting beautifully. I've got the lines here, the line is coming up the seam. That is sitting spot on. All I'm going to do is just move that, there we go. Trim, trim. Once again, I'm going to turn it around, rotate the ruler 180 degrees, narrow round two on there. And once again, all of these lines are sitting on my sewn lines. Trim, trim. So you can see how quickly this goes through. Like I say, I ran this up yesterday afternoon and it was just a dream. And everything fits together so easily, so quickly, you have no problem at all because everything's the same size. So once you've done all that, basically you just keep going till you got to your final round. So uh, this particular ruler with the eight inch, uh, you have three rounds. You've got your center square, then one, two, three rounds, obviously on both sides. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to trim this up and this then will give us the eight inch block um, that we need to work with. So round three, so round three um, is actually a white square. I'm hoping you can see the white square here. So this becomes your center square. Um, so all I'm going to do now is place that white square from the narrow on there. Now, as I do this, I'm hoping that because you've got this on the cream, and that's why I switched this one around so you could see it nice and easily, the dotted line sits on all of my seams as you go through. It just falls into place, no problem at all. So all I'm going to do now is just trim that one up. Like so, turn it through 180 degrees, rotate my ruler 180 degrees, and that same white square will go on your center square. And as you sit that on that center square, it automatically puts the edge of the ruler on the edge of the block that you've just done because you've already trimmed those two sides. So all you need to do now is trim, trim. And that gives you your finished block. If I hold that up, I think you can already see where that curve is on there. It's probably not showing up totally well because I've got a dark top on. But there we go, if I place it on there, you can see the curve already coming around here. So that's how the ruler works. Like I say, it's really, really quick and easy. These are a few more that I did yesterday afternoon while I was playing. 
And when you do them, you can, you can actually position them. What I like to do is make plenty of them up and then I will lay them out on a table, a floor, a bed, whichever is more convenient. And I will play with the layout because there's so many different ones you can do. This layout I've never actually done before. This is the first time I've done it. I tend to do it so you have like a cascading wave that goes across the work. Um, and that looks really, really effective. Um, I've done this in quite traditional colours this time. Whereas in the past, I've done them in uh, very contemporary fabrics and they do look equally as good. So you can just literally play around with how these work. And got some more here. You can mix and match. So whether you want to have um, the wide ones next to the narrow ones and make more designs, you can do that. You can, let me just, so now I've got the wrong one now. Where's it gone? Let me, let me get rid of that one. So this one, you can see how quickly you can actually play with these designs. So, oh, where's my other one? Oh, I've lost it. No, I've lost it. So, I'm hoping you can see that how that's forming a circle. Whereas if I just literally turn them around, like so, you can see a star starting to form in the center. So last year we had some lovely fabric in and I actually made this one and I actually took the end blocks off of this because I didn't want lines between it. I wanted it just to flow through. So I actually didn't put on the final blocks on these. So it just shows you all the different things that you can actually do. Uh, obviously, this is a table runner uh, and I did make some placemats to go with it as well. Uh, so it's really, really simple to use. Um, makes a lovely Christmas gift, quite honestly. Um, I've used it so much. My daughter has as well. She's particularly um, fond of this one. Um, up until two and a half years ago, I'd never used a fancy ruler. I'd only used a ruler to cut a straight line with. Um, what you can do with these rulers is just unbelievable. And the fact that you can just use things out of your stash or your scraps and you still get a really effective result. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. Uh, and that is the tutorial for the eight inch Creative Grids Curve Log Cabin Roller. Thank you for joining us. And hopefully you'll join us again next week. Thank you and bye-bye for now.